Good day and welcome to PE. Our topic today is quadratic relations and our goal, I can answer questions about relationships by modeling with a parabola and examining the graph. Now as you can tell my voice is a little rough so hopefully this goes over pretty well and you don't have to listen to it for too long. Uh, this is interpreting quadratic relations. Many situations in real life can be modeled by a quadratic function. We can use the graph to make predictions for maximums or minimum values. So we're going to take a look and see what this looks like. We're talking about the profit in thousands of dollars uh, for a company. Here we have a profit, and this is our profit function. It says our profit function is $5,000 uh, plus 1,000 times some variable x minus 5 times some variable x. And then it tells us what the variable x is. x is the amount in, dollar, in thousands of dollars the company spends on advertising. Uh, the following graph uh, is of this relation. So if they spend a lot on advertising, so X is advertising dollars. So you might think the more they spend on advertising, the more money they're going to earn because more people know about it. But let's have a look at what this graph suggests. This looks like if they spend a lot on advertising, Indeed, the more you spend on advertising, the more profit you're getting. But after a certain point, you're spending too much, and it's eating into your profits. So your profits are coming back down. You're not getting as much out of your advertising dollars as what um, you did earlier on in here. So this says, what is the maximum profit for the company? Well, down here is our values of X. This is the advertising dollars. And over here is the function P, so it's profit. So we want maximum profit. Now, this is the maximum point. So the maximum profit, I want the Y line, because the Y tells me profit. And so the maximum profit is actually right there. It's $55,000. Then it says, how much do you have to spend on advertising to get that maximum profit? Well, it's asking us for this other value here. That value is 100. If we go down here on the x value, it says 100. Now remember, that's not $100 because it says in thousands of dollars. So this is $100,000. And we got all that just by picking points off the graph. So now let's have a look at a different one where we're going to have to do a little more work for it. Uh, example 2, the world productions of gold from 1970 to 1990 can be modeled by this function. Gold equals 1492 minus 76t plus 5.2t squared, where g is the number of tons of gold, so that's how much gold we're producing in tons, and t is the number of years since 1970. So t in 1970 would be 0, and in 1971 it would be 1, and in 1972 it would be 2, and so on and so forth. So this asks us to graph it on our graphing calculator. So we're going to pull out our graphing calculator, and we're going to graph that function. Uh, we're going to think of, because uh, the calculator only graphs, um, graphs x's and y's, so this is our y, and the t's are our x's. So we're going to type it in. Remember, when you want to type in an equation, you press the y equals button. And now we're going to type in 1492 minus... 76, and now we need a T, which we're going to put in as an X, plus uh, 5.2, and we want to put in T squared. So we're going to use this X as well, X, and then the squared button is over here. Oops, right there. Oops, I got two squares. Just press the delete key. Okay. So we've got all of that. Now we're going to press graph. And there's nothing there. Now the reason there's nothing there is because um, the numbers we're dealing with are so big it goes outside of the negative 10 to positive 10 range. So I'm going to press the window range and try to figure out where we're going to go. Um, this 1492 should give us some indication that our y values should at least go up that high. And so we're going to take a look 
and at least get our y values up to 1492. So I'm going to put in 1500 and then press graph and see if I get any part of this graph at all. Oh, there's a little bit. Uh, it looks like I need to go further to really understand what's going on here. So I'm going to go back to window and I'm going to go to Um, I'm going to take my X max up to 50, so that's 50 years after 1970, and my Y max I'm going to have go to 2000. Let's see. Oh, we got a pretty good looking um, graph right here now. So we're going to deal with this graph. Uh, graph it on the graphing calculator. Okay, that's the way I graphed it. And D. Uh, were the window settings that I used. So that's what we've got. So it says, what is the minimum amount of gold produced? Well, the minimum amount of gold produced, remember, this is the gold production over here, and over here is the number of years. So if I want the minimum, I need that point there. That is our minimum. So I'm going to have to find that point. Now I'm going to go over how to do that on the graphing calculator. Pretty sure we've already done this and you have a note about this, but let's do this again. So on the graph, we're going to press second and then trace. And when I press second trace, I want, in this case, the minimum value. So I'm going to press four. And it asks us for a left bound. Now remember, the first thing we have to do is go to that minimum value. I'm going to go right to there. And now it asks us for left bound, so I'm going to go a little bit further to the left. Press enter. It asks us for right bound, so now I'm going to press the right cursor key over until I'm to the right of it, and press enter. And now it says guess, so I'm going to move the cursor key back to where it was, and press enter. Now, what that tells me, and I'm just going to grab a screenshot of here so we can talk about it a little bit more. This tells me that the, oh, it says maximum. I pressed the wrong one. So let's get rid of that. I know I've got the wrong thing because it says maximum and I wanted minimum value. So I must have pressed minimum on there. So let's cut that and go back to this thing and let's do the minimum value. We're going to go second trace and we're going to choose minimum, which is number three. I must have pressed four last time. Left bound, same thing. I'm going to go over till I'm to the left of that bottom. I'm right bound. I'm going to go to the right of that bottom. And then I'm going to go back to the middle. There we go. That's looking better. And now we're going to pull that down. Now, I want this spot here. This is giving me my minimum value. It has actually told me that the minimum value or that this point is the point 7.3 and 1214.31. So which one of those is my minimum gold production? Well, gold production was on this side, and this side is the y-axis. This is, tells us our y, so I need the y here. So the minimum gold produced was 12, um, and this is in tons, not dollars, sorry. 1214.3 tons. And it says, um, what was the amount of gold produced in 1970? 1970 is the first year of production. So let's take a look at here. That's when T equals zero in 1970. So how I do that is I press trace. And since I want T equal to zero, I'm just going to press a zero. Notice it says X equals zero on the bottom. So I press enter and it's going to jump right to it. It's at 1492. Um, let's pull that in. Pull this in so we can see it. And at year zero, 1492 was tons was produced.
Okay, now this next one, we have to actually make a table of values. It says you run a canoe rental business on a small river in Ohio. You currently charge $12 per canoe and average 36 rentals a day. An industry journal says that for every 50 cent increase in rental price, the average business can expect to lose two canoe rentals a day. Use this information and attempt to maximize your income. And we're going to find the best fit parabola on here. So number of increases. If I increase it by, let's say, two fifty cents, that's a total increase of thirteen, or that we're going to charge thirteen dollars. Because remember, we're increasing it by fifty cents. I'm going to go up in increases of two because it's much easier to add a dollar. So if I increase it by a dollar, that's two fifty cent rentals or two fifty cent increases. Um, this says I'm going to lose two rentals every time I increase it by fifty cents. So since I increased it by a dollar, I'm going to lose four rentals. So that's going to be 32. Um, when I increase it by a dollar again, uh, I'm going to have four increases. So that's going to be $14. And I have to decrease this by four again. Because for every 50 cent increases, I lose two. For a dollar increase, I'm going to lose four. Um, six, six increases means it's going to be a $15, but I'm going to lose four more, which is 24. And let's go to 10. Eight increases will be $16, and 10 increases will be $17, but I'm going to have to go down to 20 and to 16. Now, our revenue here, to get revenue, that is how much you bring in. So it's going to be the charge times the number of rentals. So I have to do $12 times 36 equals. Now I'm just going to fill in the rest of this chart. 